Hello students again, this is Mr. Schlegel, Lancer Science, back with you to talk about the muscular system. And I always forget to write it on here, but this muscular system lecture goes with the book pages 44 to 49. And as we talk about the muscular system today, the main thing you need to remember is the muscular system is responsible for movement. For movement. It moves all kinds of substances throughout your body plus it literally moves your body so keep that in mind as we go today I threw a picture in here of Mr. Skiles back in college back in his college days when he used to do Mr. Universe contests and these are the muscles that we all think of when you hear the word muscles this is what you think of you think of those bone hard abs and you think of those bone hard arms and chest. These are the muscles you think of. However, this is not the whole story. So I've got a picture there of a U-Haul truck showing you the muscles are responsible for moving. They're responsible for moving stuff. The muscles we see is just the tip of the iceberg and sure you're right I would not like to meet that guy in a dark alley but it's not the whole thing that muscles are about. Muscles work to move stuff within our bodies, all kinds of stuff. So the main things they move are bones, which would be the muscles you can see. They also move food, which would be through the digestive system. You have muscles responsible for that, or they move blood through your body. Muscles are responsible for that as well. Yeah, good point. That guy could move a whole lot of stuff, as you see his huge muscles, but there are different types of muscles. Just like I said, there are ones that are involuntary muscles. And these muscles you do not get to control. And the way I remember this is if it keeps happening while I'm sleeping, I know it's an involuntary muscle. So hopefully you can kind of think of a couple of those. Things that continue to happen, muscles that continue to contract even while you're asleep. So that could be your muscles that cause you to breathe, the diaphragm underneath your lungs, as well as pumping blood, which would be your heart, as well as some muscles in your blood vessels, and digesting food continues to happen even when you're sleeping. That would be muscles pushing food through your digestive tract. There are also muscles that you do get to control, and these muscles are called voluntary muscles. You choose to use these. Now there might be a couple that are kind of in between these two. So something like sneezing, you can fake a sneeze, you can choose to do that. Or something like yawning, you can choose to do that. Or you can choose to breathe faster. If you want to <laughs> hyperventilate a little bit, you can choose to do that. Some of those kind of cross over into both. But these voluntary muscles would be muscles that move your bones, thus moving your body parts move your arms, move your legs, raise your hand in class, talk uncontrollably during flex time with your mouth. These are all muscles that you can choose to use and they're called voluntary muscles, meaning you volunteer to use them. That's a good way to kind of keep that fresh. Voluntary you choose to use or you volunteer to use. Muscles are definitely not all created equal. They come in three different types. The first one is skeletal muscle, and that's what moves your bones by hooking to those bones with tendons. So a tendon goes from your muscle, hooks onto a bone, and when your muscle contracts or shortens, it pulls on that bone, thus moving the bone, thus moving your body. The second type is smooth muscle, and this is one that you do not have control over. The skeletal muscle is the only one you have control over. Smooth and cardiac, you do not have control over. Smooth muscle, its main job is to move food through your digestive system and help get blood back to the heart. So within your veins in your body, that there's muscle that squeezes blood back to your heart and throughout your digestive system, in your esophagus, in your stomach, in your small intestine, you have smooth muscle that squeezes food through your body. I like to think of it kind of like you empty a go-gurt container. How your fingers, you squeeze on it and then you push the stuff through. That's how your muscles kind of work as they push food through your body. 
And then cardiac muscle is the last, and its job is to move blood through your body. And cardiac muscle is only found in the heart. So if you hear muscles in the heart, you know we're talking about cardiac muscle. And that is different structure-wise to skeletal and smooth. Skeletal, you choose to move. Smooth and cardiac are both involuntary, meaning you don't choose to move them. Skeletal muscles react and tire quickly. So you can do things really fast with your skeletal muscles, but they run out of juice really quick. They're not able to keep going for very long. Smooth muscle, on the other hand, it reacts and tires slowly. So smooth muscle can be tired out, but it takes a long time. And it also reacts slowly. It doesn't happen fast. Cardiac muscles react slowly and never tires out. Why is this a big deal? Hopefully, you were able to figure out, well, it's a good thing your heart never tires out because it has to keep beating all the time, right? So from when you're born, even before you're born, at like 12 weeks after pregnancy, you can see a heartbeat start all the way until you finally die, which for some people can be over 100 years, that heart never tires out. And we're talking, that thing beats like at least 60 times per minute which is a whole lot of beats, so it never tires out. Skeletal muscles, the ones that move your body, they work in pairs. So one will contract or shorten while the other one extends to its full length. Now muscles can't get longer. They can either get shorter or they can go to their full length. The, when the bone moves the other way, the opposite muscle gets shorter and contracts while the other one relaxes. Can you think of some muscle pairs in your body that work this way? Even if you don't know the names of the muscles, can you move your body and see which pairs kind of move this direction? As you kind of think about that, we will talk about it in class. So think about bones moving one direction and what muscle is the one that's shortening or pulling on that bone to make it move. No twerking, please, while you move your body to see what muscles move and what bones move. How do you keep your muscles healthy, like these two right here? You'll find out a lot of body parts will come down to the same things as keeping healthy. And of course, the first one is exercise for your muscles. It's important, but in order to get the most out of your muscles, stretching is actually a very helpful thing. It brings extra blood flow to your muscles so they are able to have enough oxygen to use the cellular respiration and keep going and be healthy. So getting enough blood to them comes from proper stretching before you exercise, also after you exercise. And the second thing, exercise, and this goes right along with it, is diet, huge factor. Muscles need certain nutrients and minerals in order to be healthy. You also need to keep your muscles properly hydrated by drinking enough water. If you're not getting the right nutrients, your muscles will not be as flexible, will not be able to stretch as much, will not be as strong, therefore not as healthy. So they won't be able to do their jobs quite as much if you're not getting the right diet and if you're not exercising and stretching with that exercise. So if you're really interested in healthy muscles as well as bones like we talked about, diet and exercise are very important. Exercise builds those bones, also builds muscles. Diet keeps them fueled, gives them the nutrients they need to be healthy. And that is the end of our presentation today. Now get out there and use those muscles. And you'll use all of them, not that you have a choice, right? You don't really have a choice to stop breathing or stop pumping blood. Hopefully you have learned something. If there's anything that's confusing, go back and watch it again, or check out your book, page 44 to 49. Thank you for watching. We'll talk to you another time.